What's up guys, Handish here with another Destiny 2 video and today I wanted to look at the best auto rifles in Destiny 2 since auto rifles are actually kind of good now. In fact, they're really good in my opinion, both for PvE and for PvP stuff and it seems that Bungie have landed in a really good spot in terms of damage and handling of auto rifles and how they interact with the game. It's safe to say that in PvP stuff, auto rifles are now a serious part of the meta game, and that's why I want to look at this weapon class first right here. I don't want to commit to reviewing these weapons for one type of content though, so we're going to look at weapons which perform well across the board. I essentially have a top 5 here, but I'll also throw some others in that are worth a mention as well. So the first weapon I wanted to take a look at is the Valakadin or Valakadin. I'm not quite sure which way you say that, but this is a Viced Auto Rifle, a very solid weapon. If we take a look right here, it's a 720 round per minute weapon, so versus something like Uriel's Gift, that's a 450 rounds per minute. So this is higher rate of fire, naturally comes with lower impact, quite a bit less range than Uriel's in particular, but it does have higher stability and a higher reload speed right there. Obviously the magazine has 53 rounds because it is higher rate of fire, but also it comes with rapid fire frame, deeper ammo reserves, slightly faster reload when the magazine is empty. So there are plenty of rounds with this thing, the reloads are very quick as well, which is really really nice in game, it doesn't ever feel kind of jarring or anything like that, like you're reloading too often or the reloads themselves take too long. So it has a fixed visual weapon sight option, but it comes with corkscrew rifling, which is slightly increased range and stability and handling speed. And then we have fluted barrel, ultra light barrel, greatly increases handling speed and slightly increases stability. And finally, hammer forged rifling, which does bump up the range. In the first column, we've got accurized rounds. The weapon can fire longer distances, which increases range. Flared magwell, optimized for fast reloading, so increases stability and greatly increases increases reload speed. We also have under pressure, improved stability and accuracy as the magazine gets lower. So this weapon is really focused around accuracy and performing well at extended ranges. I personally think this is a really good PvP assault rifle, which is kind of under the radar a little bit right now. The bonuses don't come across as being kind of super flashy or anything like that, but what we do have here is a really solid assault rifle that performs and handles very, very well. And in its kind of optimum range, because it has a slight higher rate of fire, it's actually fairly obnoxious to play against because of course you have flinch in the game and if you're using you know hand cannon or a pulse rifle, that flinch is very very noticeable when it comes from assault rifles and firing 720 rounds per minute, this does put out quite a lot of flinch. Also the higher rate of fire means that it's fairly solid in close range but it does perform well at medium ranges and with accurized rounds you will notice the performance at slightly longer ranges, you know the damage drop off isn't as severe as you might expect. This isn't to say that this is a long range weapon though, you know, origin story or something like that, Uriel's gift is noticeably better at range. Accurized rounds essentially extends your performance at range a little bit. So definitely a very good weapon worth trying out if you're into your auto rifles. Great magazine size, great reloads, handling is very solid. It's simply a very, very good auto rifle. The next weapon I wanted to take a look at is the Prosecutor Auto Rifle. This one comes from Trials of the Nine. And this is a 450 round per minute assault rifle. So this one is actually identical to Uriel's Gift. It actually comes with a pinch less range than Uriel's Gift, but a tiny bit more stability, handling, and reload speed. So it has some stat advantages over Uriel's Gift. 32 in the mag, which is one less than Uriel's Gift. But otherwise it comes with very similar perks. So it's in the precision frame archetype, the weapon's recoil pattern, is more predictably vertical. This is another weapon that you can't actually change the weapon sight on, but you have kind of barrel options. So chambered compensator, stable barrel attachment, which increases stability, moderately controls recoil and slightly decreases handling speed. We have corkscrew rifling, slightly increases range and stability while increasing handling speed and polygonal rifling, barrel optimized for recoil reduction, which increases stability. It has slideways, sliding partially reloads this weapon's magazine and temporarily boosts handling and stability. This is actually a bonus I should try out a little bit because I do tend to slide around quite a lot in the Crucible in particular. We also have tap the trigger though, grants a short period of increased stability and accuracy on initial trigger pull, which is a very good bonus you'll also find on Yoriel's Gift. The Prosecutor also has hip fire grip, ergonomic grip that increases accuracy and stability when firing from the hip. So very, very good bonuses all around. I feel like most people will go with tap the trigger. You also have hip fire and of course, 
course, being in the precision frame archetype, the weapon is focused on kind of handling very well, having lots of stability and being relatively precise. In the Crucible, the weapon is devastatingly accurate. With this one having more range and impact, it generally does a little bit better at kind of medium and longer range engagements than something like Valakadin. This is a much more kind of classic type of auto rifle, I guess, where kind of at really long ranges, you'd lose out to scouts and pulse rifles. Really close range, you lose out to hand cannons and SMGs and stuff. So you really want to stay in that kind of medium range engagement. But if you do, this thing absolutely destroys. The weapon itself does have a very high range stat though. I just personally would rather not kind of try to engage people at long range with this thing. You know, if there's an easy kill and someone's kind of not paying attention to you or whatever, then you can definitely engage at some pretty long ranges. I feel like having this much range on the weapon really is about giving you more of an opportunity at range as opposed to actually being a ranged weapon, if that makes sense. It probably has the most kind of vertical recoil pattern of any weapon that I've seen in Destiny 2 so far. There is very, very minimal horizontal recoil of any type, and it makes the weapon very, very easy to control. Let's not forget slideways as well. You know, if you like sliding around corners into gunfights, this could be really, really nice. Or if you're dealing with multiple targets and you kind of slide away into cover or something like that, then it's going to reload some of the magazine. So that can be a pretty beneficial bonus. Slideways can also be pretty nice in PvE stuff as well, allowing you to bump that magazine up a bit at a time. There aren't any kind of damage bonuses that make it, you know, super appealing for PvE. But again, the way the weapon handles makes it really easy to kind of deal your damage and everything like that. It's another one of those weapons where there's just not really anything bad I can say about it. And the next weapon I wanted to take a look at is Yoriel's Gift, very similar to the Prosecutor. If we make that direct comparison again, Yoriel's has slightly more range, a little bit less stability, handling, and reload speed, but otherwise it is in the same archetype. Also comes with precision frame, the weapon's recoil pattern is more predictably vertical, but in the sights we have Spark PS, Omen on post sight for short zoom, increased range, and increased handling speed. We also have Flash HS5, Omen on red dot medium zoom, which slightly increases range and handling speed. Both of them are very, very good options, and it does actually change the scope a little bit visually, so it's not like some of the others where it's fixed. A big one for Yoriel's gift is that it has high caliber rounds, shots from the weapon knock the target back farther, which slightly increases your range as well. It also has steady rounds, the magazine is optimized for recoil control, which increases stability while slightly decreasing range, and then tap the trigger, grants a short period of initial stability and accuracy on initial trigger pull. And this is kind of where it beats out the Trials Auto Rifle because that has the hip fire option, which I feel like is generally less beneficial to people, whereas Yoriel's has steady rounds, so you can control recoil and stability even more, or the option of high caliber rounds, which is huge in terms of that boost to range, but also the flincher that it causes to targets as well. Flinch is a very big factor in Destiny 2's PvP, and on top of the bonus range and the high range stat, this will be very, very beneficial, but also in PvE content, high caliber rounds is really really, really good. It just helps to keep enemies staggered a little bit more. And Yoriel's Gift doesn't handle in the same way that the Prosecutor does. It definitely has more horizontal recoil at the same time, although the recoil that you get is very, very manageable. And like I said, they are very, very similar weapons, but I feel like high caliber rounds in particular really gives Yoriel's Gift that edge for PvE and PvP stuff, and the Prosecutor's kind of handling and recoil profile doesn't quite compensate for that. There is yet another weapon which fits into the archetype that Yoriel's Gift has, and that is the Number, which is the FWC auto rifle, another energy weapon, has the same rate of fire as Yoriel's Gift, this time with a little bit less range and stability, although this one makes up for it in some different ways. So it is another precision frame weapon. It has sight options of Candle PS, which is greatly increased handling speed and range, as well as Flash HS5, Omelon Red Dot, with increased range and slightly increased handling speed. The big one for this weapon, though, is extended mag, greatly increased magazine size, and greatly decreased reload speed. It also has ricochet rounds, just like the hard light, so increases stability, increases range, and rounds ricochet off hard surfaces. And finally, we have high impact reserves, rounds at the end of the magazine deal more damage. And despite this weapon not statistically standing up as well to things like Uriel's Gift, it does have a higher magazine size because of extended mag, so it has 39 rounds in the magazine, but of course it also has high impact reserves 
reserves, so as you kind of run the ammo out of the mag, it will deal more damage, so you may find that you don't actually want to run extended magazine, and that makes total sense, and you can run ricochet rounds instead. Now this thing can do basically anything that the other auto rifles we've spoken about can do. It does have noticeably more recoil and stuff like that. The range drop off is slightly higher because the range stat is lower. Ricochet rounds can solve this problem to a degree, but I feel like out of the weapons we've looked at, this is the best for PvE stuff so far. You can do all of the usual kind of tricks with ricochet rounds, but the thing I really like is the high impact reserves. If you're firing this into like a group of mobs or whatever, you know, you get that extra damage towards the end of the magazine, it can be really beneficial. This is also very, very good if you're firing at a single tanky target, and especially kind of elemental shields as well, because this is an energy weapon, so you can take the shield off and then you've still got plenty of rounds in the mag, also that are gonna do bonus damage. I actually like running extended mag and high impact reserves at the same time in pve stuff although i do feel like taking extended mag off in pvp is probably going to be beneficial generally though where many of the other auto rifles kind of focus on precision and recoil and things like that this one can focus a little bit on damage stuff which is nice but the final weapon i wanted to take a look at is the origin story auto rifle right here another weapon that fits into the 450 rounds per minute archetype it also has a higher magazine than most of them at 30 36 rounds. Yet again, it's a precision frame weapon. We have some different sight options as well here. So hit mark, IS, agile sight with short zoom for increased handling and range. We've got red dot 2 MOA, snapshot sight with increased range and increased handling speed. And then red dot micro, increased range and increased handling speed once again. But of course these visually change the sight on the weapon. It also has appended mag. The weapons magazine is built for higher capacity. So it increases the magazine size and that's how we get 36 rounds. You have flared magwell as well, optimized for fast reloading, which increases stability and greatly increases reload speed. So both very good options. And finally, we have Rampage. Kills with a weapon temporarily grant increased damage, which stacks three times. And Rampage is a really huge one on this auto rifle. But the other thing worth mentioning about this one is the recoil pattern, which is just really natural. It feels really easy to use this weapon. And that's without it kind of having tons of options or whatever to increase stability or decrease recoil. It generally just handles incredibly, incredibly well. Of course, this is a kinetic weapon, which is also beneficial. In PvE stuff, you don't have to worry about what burns are on or anything like that. If you're not shooting a shield, you're doing as much damage as you could possibly be doing. This thing just feels devastatingly powerful across the board. Rampage is really huge for this weapon. In PvP, obviously, if you take one target down and you continue firing at another target, then having the bonus damage, you know, it's gonna help you win a good few times. In PvE stuff though, I feel like this is huge for the weapon, you know, because you could be getting so many multi-kills, increasing that damage. An origin story in particular, despite range stats or comparisons versus other weapons, handles very, very well at range. And there isn't any kind of extreme damage drop-off that I've noticed, unless you are literally fighting people at scout rifle ranges. So the combination of having, you know, increased magazine size, rampage where the weapon's gonna do more damage as you get more kills, and then precision frame, which is helping you with that recoil. This weapon is just fantastic. It's possibly the best legendary auto rifle out there. I've pretty much got it at number one on this list. I haven't found an assault rifle in the Crucible that feels better and performs better. And it's pretty much the same in PvE stuff as well, outside of the kind of energy weapons being able to deal with different elements. This one just feels really good and it really packs a punch. So those really for me are the top five auto rifles that you could take between PvE and PvP stuff and do very, very well. There are a couple of additional mentions right here. So Scathelock, also a very, very solid weapon. It's in a slightly different archetype at 600 rounds per minute. So it fires faster than Origin Story or any of those weapons. It is another kinetic weapon. So it's a good kinetic option if you're looking for one. It's an adaptive frame weapon, a well-rounded grip, reliable and sturdy. You've got the IS-5 Circle, Model 8 Red and Mark 10 Glass Scopes, which also visually change as well as affect in stats and things like that. It has high caliber rounds. So, you know, if you're wanting a high cal kinetic weapon, this is a really good option. You've also got tactical mag to increase stability, increase reload speed and magazine size, and then under pressure, improved stability and accuracy as the magazine gets lower. It does have 42 rounds in the mag and it handles generally very well. You'll see a little bit more horizontal recoil with this weapon versus some of the other weapons, but it's not, you know, extreme or kind of unpleasant to use. Visually, Scathelock is also really, really cool right here. I've got the Raid Shader 
trigger on this one and it just looks badass it's one of the coolest looking weapons i've seen in destiny so far and i feel like the combination of having a higher mag size high caliber rounds again as well as under pressure which is going to improve your accuracy over time again there's just nothing bad to say about this assault rifle sweet business is another one which i think deserves a mention here really it's got a huge magazine at 99 rounds it has high caliber rounds so you know it's going to have that effect in pve and pvp stuff as you hold the trigger the weapons range and rate of fire automatically increases as well as automatically loading ammo pickups into the magazine and the great thing about this is its ability to just take down multiple targets so don't rate it a ton in pvp although it is a very fun weapon to use it's not a bad weapon it's just very difficult to kind of get used to pre-firing with this thing you know really letting it ramp up because that's you know what you really have to do to get the damage that you want out of this thing simply having a magazine this high and being able to take down so many targets is really huge and if you're a titan as well you can pair this with the actium war rig which actually reloads rounds into your magazine for auto rifles as you empty the magazines so i've had a lot of fun running things like sweet business and uriel's gift or any of the energy auto rifles at the same time and them kind of continuously reloading ammo back into the mag it's a really really fun and effective way to play as well the additional thing i like about sweet business is as well as being able to take down a lot of targets in one magazine and kind of output damage you know if there's one single tanky target you can ramp this thing up to full rate of fire and do pretty much as much damage as you're ever going to do with a primary weapon at that point in time so you know if you're out of heavy ammo in a particular situation it can kind of come in and be pretty useful there are of course other auto rifles in the game like i said auto rifles right now perform very very well bungie have done a fantastic job i haven't really used an auto rifle and felt like you know this weapon is trash or anything like that so that's definitely a good sign and of course the weapons in this video are just my opinion so i'll be curious to hear yours in the comment section below guys i know this may have been kind of a long video but i hope you have enjoyed it definitely let me know your thoughts your favorite weapon and everything like that in the comment section if you have enjoyed the video though a like really helps me out on the channel i'm also giving away a confluence of light emblem with my pal hollow tide this is the kind of gamescom emblem so definitely check out the link for that in the description below you can follow us on twitter and subscribe on youtube and things like that the more things that you do the more entries you have so definitely check that out for now though i appreciate you guys watching if you're new around here be sure to hit subscribe to see a lot more destiny 2 content but for now whatever you do have an awesome day.